Good afternoon, students. So a quick recap of on what we were discussing in the last lecture. Towards the end of the last lecture, we were discussing how to calculate the message transfer time. Particularly, we are interested in the delay component, something like transmission time, propagation time or propagation delay, and queuing time. And we also illustrated with a single link okay, how we can calculate the transfer time. So basically, we are interested to calculate the time needed to transfer a message of certain size from one node to another node, which are directly connected by a link. Of course, as I said before, this could be extended to a path which traverses one or more links or one or two, one or more switches or routers, which we will discuss in the tutorial next week. So what we have seen is unacknowledged transfer. So when we say unacknowledged transfer, the message is sent from, let's say, A to B. And the message, there are, let's say, size number of bits. And once the last bit is received by B, we say that the transfer is complete. So there is no need for B to send an acknowledgement back to A to acknowledge that it has received the message. Right? But in uh, most practical cases, the transfer would be acknowledged message transfer. That is, when the message is received, the receiver will acknowledge or it will send an acknowledgement back to the sender. When we say acknowledgement, again, this is a short message or small packet okay, uh, with few bytes, which would be sent back to the sender okay, to acknowledge that it has received the message. Okay? So in the case of acknowledged message transfer, the message is sent from A to B. And upon receiving the message, an acknowledgement, let's say this is an acknowledgement message is sent back from B to A. Okay? And how we calculate the transfer time in this particular case, we say the transfer is complete here when the acknowledgement is received by A. In the previous case, we say the transfer is complete when the message is received by B. Now the definition slightly changes. The, the transfer is complete when the acknowledgement is received by A. So it's quite easy to, uh, to derive an expression for this. At time TT, at time TT, the entire message is transmitted at A, meaning that the last bit of the message is transmitted at A, at time TT. And that last message needs to travel towards B, so it takes another TP time units. So at TT plus TP, at TT plus TP, the message is received at B. Okay, That is, last bit is received by B. Then B sends an acknowledgement. Let's say it takes T acknowledgement. Because the acknowledgement is also a short message which need to be transmitted. That means it has to send bit 1, bit 2, bit 3, etc. And that acknowledgement will take another TP time units to reach A. Okay. So if you add up this, you get TT plus 2 TP. And there is another component, T acknowledgement. This is the time to transmit an acknowledgement message. Because the acknowledgement packet or acknowledgement message size is too small, too short when compared to the payload data, we, sim we most of the time we ignore the acknowledgement transmission time. But if in the test or exam or any problem, if you are explicitly told that the acknowledgement, there is an acknowledgement which carries 100 bytes, 200 bytes, whatever it is, then you need to include the acknowledgement transmission time as well. If nothing is specified, you just ignore it. Of course, we need to add queuing time. Queuing time is the time for which the message is waiting at the queue. That means the message has arrived or the message is ready for transmission, but the, we are not transmitting it because the link is busy in transmitting other packet or other messages. Is that okay? Okay. Now, in this context, we use a new term called RTT, round trip time. 
as the name says round trip time means the time taken by a small bit by a bit or short message to traverse from one end to the other end we can define rtt for a link or you can define rtt for a connection connection means which can transfer sorry which can traverse more than one link okay so say for example if you use ping command or utility if you say ping some ip address okay or ping some server or something from your system so you can see what is the round trip time how long it takes for a small message to go from this end to the remote server and come back right so this is the round trip time when you consider a long connection when it traverses through multiple routers okay round trip time okay you cannot easily calculate it but for a link we can say that the rtt round trip time is two times propagation time so we can make this assumption okay. rtt is two times propagation time the time to travel from a to b and the time to travel back from b to a that is the round trip time in the network context there is a interesting parameter which call db product delay uh, multiplied by bandwidth product okay. so which is uh, quite significant for network community what is this db product what exactly we mean by delay so here by delay we mean the propagation delay so that's the convention it's not transfer time it's not transmission time it's the propagation time d you take any link so let's say this is a link so associated with the link there are two key parameters one is the length length of the link how long is the length how long it is okay is so 1 km long link or 10 100 1000 2000 5000 <laughs> so it is uh, the, the length will define the delay okay because longer the link more the time to travel from one side to the other side okay so that is the length of the link again associated with the link there is another key parameter which is called bandwidth because you are given a link so obviously we need to ask two questions what is the data rate what is the bandwidth is it 100 mbps 1 gbps 10 gbps okay so that is the bandwidth or data rate as i said i am using these two terms interchangeably bandwidth and data rate okay so bandwidth will define uh, the transmission time how fast we can put the bit onto the link how fast you can drive the signal onto the link so that is a bandwidth okay so what i'm trying to say is that the link has two key parameters bandwidth and the length accordingly associated with the link link there is a transmission time and propagation time okay now what is this db product now imagine that a bit a bit is transmitted at time t equal to 0 when a bit is transmitted it is at one end of the link okay and this bit our signal will propagate towards the other side when it at what time it will reach the other end of the link at time t equal to d okay d is the propagation time so at time t equal to 0 it is at one end of the link let's say one end of the link it starts propagating traveling then at the other end it reaches at time t equal to d but within this d time units the sender or the transmitter would have transmitted certain number of bits right because the transmitter is continuously sending the bit bit 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 etc so within time t d time units how many bits would have been transmitted so if you take b b is the data rate this is the number of bits transmitted per unit time per second so in in d time units the sender would have transmitted d multiplied b number of bits where are those bits all those bits are inside the link let's say bit 1 is here bit 2 is here bit 3 is here bit 4 is here bit 5 is here this is something like you take a bridge you take a snapshot so there are many cars one by okay traveling okay uh, one behind the other is that okay so how many bits are there on a link at any instant of time or maximum how many bits can be there it is db product db see for example if the delay propagation time is let's say 100 millisecond 
and let's say the link bandwidth is uh, 45 Mbps, just some numbers, okay? You can use 100 Mbps also, okay? So when you multiply this, you get 4,500 kilobits. That is 4.5 million bits. You just imagine that at any given time, there are 4.5 million bits which are propagating, uh, traveling through the link. Why it is significant? You just imagine the case, okay, where let's say this is the center, this is the receiver. Let's say receiver is receiving bits, packets or bits or whatever it is from the sender. Let's say at some point of time, the receiver, okay, is not able to cope up with this. It wants to, okay, give a signal to sender to stop. Let's say receiver, okay, doesn't want more bits. Okay, it has already received so many bits, it wants, so it's finding it difficult to process those bits, okay? So if receiver wants to send a signal to the center to stop transmission, how long it will take? It, so sending a signal means it will take D time units, right? That signal fr should go from here to here. It takes D time units to notify, yes. But within the D time units, this transmitter would have sent DB number of bits. 4.5 million bits already have been sent. So maybe those 4.5 million bits may have to be dropped. Okay, so that's why DB product okay, has some significance. Now let's look at um, a yeah, simple example to calculate what is throughput. I think the last exam, uh, last lecture, I, I gave the definition of throughput and we tried to compare the throughput and bandwidth. Let's say you are given a link with some bandwidth B or data rate B. Let's say one Gbps. So obviously we would expect to transfer one gigabits, 10 raised to the nine uh, bits in one second. But when you try to download, some file I made doesn't happen in one second, correct? So when you try to measure, we are trying, we are measuring what is called the throughput. How long it takes to transfer a message? That is more important for us. That's the throughput. It's also called effective throughput. So throughput is defined as the message size divided by message transfer time. So basically it tells how much time is taken for the message to be transferred from one end to the other end. It could be an acknowledged transfer or unacknowledged transfer. Okay, sometimes when you read the problem, you'll understand whether there's an acknowledgement or not. Okay, uh, or sometimes the problem talks about RTT. Whenever it talks about RTT, round trip time, okay, it implicitly states that it is an acknowledged transfer. There's an acknowledgement coming back. Okay, so you need to use the formula which, which we used for uh, acknowledged transfer. So for unacknowledged transfer, unacknowledged transfer, the time will be transmission time plus propagation time. And for acknowledged transfer, it would be TT plus 2TP or transmission time plus RTT. That's the time for transferring a message. This is called message transfer time, message latency, Etc. Okay. So we get some throughput. Let's say I have one Gbps, but the throughput I'm getting is only 400 Mbps, correct? So how close is my throughput with the bandwidth? That is defined by throughput rate. Throughput rate means the ratio between throughput and bandwidth. If both are same, you get the throughput rate is 100%. Okay. And numerically, this throughput rate is equal to utilization, link utilization, numerically, though the definition is slightly different, but if you look at the number, the utilization throughput rate would be the same. So let's look at an example. Let's consider a link where the RTT is 10, 10 millisecond. So if it's a link, it's basically two times TP. If it's a connection, it could be two times TP plus some more time to get process at the router or maybe queuing time, etc. Message size is one MB. So if you recall the notation, if we, for any size, size of the message, memory, hard disk, okay, thumb drive or whatever it is, it should be base two. So one MB means two raised to the power 20. So this is two raised to the power 10, two raised to the power 10. So two raised to the power 20, you multiply by eight to convert this into bits. Let's say the data rate is 10 Mbps. Then the transfer time would be 
Um, this is TT. The transmission time is size, 1 MB, divided by the data rate. This is TT. And this is RTT. So we are using this formula for an acknowledge, sorry, for acknowledged transfer. So the transfer time is 849 milliseconds. The throughput would be 1 MB divided by 849. We are able to transfer 1 MB of data in 849 milliseconds. So you get the throughput of 9.88 Mbps. It's quite good, very good throughput. Okay? So throughput rate is 9.88 divided by 10, because 10 is the data rate. You get 98.8 as the throughput rate, 98.8 percentage. That is numerically equivalent to the link utilization. Yes, we look into the definition of utilization later in some later topics. Any doubt? Students, any doubt? Yes? Yes. Uh, no, RTT is for a short message. Ideally, it's for a bit. So you can ignore it. Because the message transmission, so that time would be much higher compared to the, the transmission of a bit or a short message. So. Yeah, so, so, so it doesn't include. So let's move on to the next topic. That would be the last topic in the lecture. So we are going to look at the network design or network layered architecture. So how the network is designed. When you say network design, okay, it's mostly software design. So basically, we can also call it as network operating system. Okay. So how, because we are going to answer only one question, how we can transfer a message from one place to another place. That is the job of the network, right? Whether you use it for email application, Gmail, social media, for any type of application, ultimately, the network is going to transfer a piece of message from one end to the other end. That's all. Okay. How it is accomplished? So how? We can design various elements in the network operating system, which will be running on our host, maybe computer or phone or whatever it is, switches, routers, uh, gateways. Okay, so what pieces of software running collectively? Okay, we can call them as network operating system. It's a suite of software. Okay, and though we say it's a layered architecture, maybe in the first site you may think it's a hardware hardware architecture. It's not hardware architecture. It's purely software. Okay, there's only one hardware component that is nothing but the transmission of bits, signals, onto the cable. That is the only hardware which is used. Otherwise, all the functions carried out by the network, they are carried out in software. Okay? Of course, we can see later that some error detection is carried out in some hardware, shift register-based uh, uh, circuit, etc. Let's look at a simple example. Let's say we have two hosts. One is the sender and one is the destination. Usually the sender is the server. Let's say we are trying to uh, read an email message or write an email message. Okay. So it's usually at the, in the first hop, it's connected by wi uh, wired or wireless. Let's say it's connected to a switch. I just show a wireless, sorry, wired link. So it can be a wireless link as well. Then switch, router, 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 switch, switch, host. So please note that it's a very simplified example. Okay, so your message may go through many routers, could traverse many switches. Okay, so this is just to illustrate various functionalities. Okay? And app is app, application is running here, application is running here. So ultimately, these two applications, they are going to communicate, they are going to talk to each other. So let's say, just imagine an email application. Let's say you're trying to use Gmail. So there's a Gmail server, remote place, and there is a Gmail server which runs an app application, and your computer, you, that also runs an application, web browsing, sorry, Gmail application. They are going to talk to each other to transfer the message. Similarly, you do web browsing. There's a remote server who runs web browsing application. You are also running a web browsing application. So these are the two parties. They are going to talk to each other, but they cannot directly talk to each other. They cannot directly talk to each other. Okay, so, so this is something like let's say you are you try to send a postal mail, 
I mean, as I said, maybe you are all two K kids, right? You might not have used postal mail frequently, okay? But at least for online purchase and other things we use, right? Let's say you are sending uh, uh, an envelope, okay, mail to your friend, okay, or let's say parents are this. You are sending some parcel. Let's say you you bought an ice gift. You are sending it to uh, your parents in another country, right? Or friend in another country, right? So ultimately, you are transferring that to your friend, right? It doesn't happen directly, right? So you need to go to the post office, right? Or courier send. Let's say you go to the post office. That post office also directly, they don't deliver to the post office in another country. So this from this post office, they transfer to maybe another head post office, head office, right? And that post office will deliver it to maybe some city in your country, in another country. That city post office may transfer to another post office. So, so it's not happening directly. So the communication is indirect. It goes through vertically. I, I go to the post office, that post office goes to another post office, this, this, this. Okay. So similarly, though we say the app transfers some data to another app, it's not a direct communication, but it has to go through a number of functions, right? So, uh, for example, um, there are several functions or services which are carried out at different network elements or network systems, okay? Some functions are carried out at your host, computer or phone. Some functions are carried out at the switch, at the router, okay? And so some services are carried out there. So what are those services or functions? Just to name a few, routing, right? So you, uh, the message has to be routed, right? So we need the network to provide routing function. Right? And similarly, let's say uh, when we send a piece of data to another system through a link, wired or wireless link, there is a small probability that a bit may be corrupted. One may become zero, zero may become one, right? Which we do not want. So we want uh, the network to provide some function, like let's say error detection, how we can detect the error. First of all, it should know that there is an error, right? Then if there is an error, what should be done? Should it drop and ask the other party to send it again or just you drop it, just continue with others? So there are few approaches, right? So that need to be done. Right? Similarly, let's say, let's say there's a sender. Sender is a very powerful device. Let's say he produces data much faster rate than the receiver can handle it. That's also possible, right? Am I right? Let's say the road is clear. You are going to the airport. The road is clear. Bandwidth is there. You just drive. But when you enter the airport, or maybe any mall or something, right, there may be delay there because they are not able to handle it, right? So road is clear, but the mall or the airport is not able to process it. Similarly, the sender, if the sender is quite powerful and fast, he is sending more and more data and the receiver is a poor device, he is not able to process. See, for example, 10,000 packets are sent in one second by the sender. Whether the receiver can process 10,000 packets in one second, if it cannot, then there's another issue that network has to handle. As an application, as a user, I don't care, okay? I want the network to take care. For me, the network is very clean. I want to send, I want to receive, so everything should be done in a perfect manner, right? So these functions need to be carried out at different network elements, and these functions, okay, are uh, organized into different groups a different group of functions, software functions, programs, that we call them as layers. In the network context, we call them as layer. So one layer means it provides a set of functions. It provides some services, okay? And that is implemented in software, okay? And a piece of data undergoes the functions vertically, then horizontally. The meaning here is that at the host, so there are a number of layers, maybe at the top, the application layer. Application layer produces the message. Message means piece of data, right? Whether it's an image, text, or whatever it is. Okay. And at the lowest layer, 
this is the bits. The bit transmission or signal transmission takes place. This is the hardware layer. The lowest layer is the hardware layer. So there's an adapter which will transmit the bits, okay, wireless or in wired manner, right? So in between, the message has to go through a number of functions, okay? And these functions, which we say it goes through layers, maybe let's say multiple layers. Each layer is doing something. This is something like you send your letter or your gift to the post office. Post office is doing something on that, right? Let me mark, let me give some sense. Let's say it's a registered post, they give you some numbers, right? And they make a record, they make a record of it. And they may also want to group many such things which go to the same country and that will be sent to the other one, and they will put it into another large bag or box or container, right? So many tasks need to be done at every stage. So that's why we say it's vertically. And once it reaches some element, let's say switch, it enters into the lowest layer, because whenever a system receives, it receives the hardware, the bits, signals. Okay? Then it has to do some processing and it has to make a decision, like what we have seen in some example, okay? Maybe it has to look into the address, it has to decide whether it has to send it to the router, okay, or which router it has to send it. So many decisions it has to make, right? So then it will be sent, the message will go through layers again, and this will be sent to the next network element, let's say router. Again, it's received at the lowest layer, physical layer, or the bits. Then it has to go through a number of functions, then it come back and go here. So what I'm trying to say is, within a network system, okay, the data traverses vertically. Once some processing is done, then it is sent to the next element. Then again, vertically, it goes through some layers, it carries out certain functions. So when we say layers, layers have an advantage because layering always provides abstraction to hide complexity. Right? This is something like designing any program. You write many small, small functions. Right? And also, uh, network design becomes easier because when you have layers, that means you group the functions. Okay, this layer does routing. This set of functions, they do error detection, retransmission, etc. Right? So that would be easier. Okay, when you're developing the program or testing, or tomorrow, let's say, I want to replace this routing function by another routing function, that can be done without affecting the other layers. Is that okay? So always, um, this is something like say divide and rule. Always you have, you divide the entire program into small sub-problems and rule it. Then designing a sub-problem, testing a small sub-problem is easier. Then you put them or integrate them. And associate with each layer, there is a protocol. Okay, so later you come across this terminology quite often, network protocol, okay? flow control protocol, okay, TCP is a transport protocol, okay? some protocols, okay, IP, so routing protocol. So this terminology you will come across. So what's the meaning of protocol? What's the English meaning of, English literal meaning of protocol? Protocol means? Something like set of defined rules, right? Which need to follow. Right, this is a protocol. So uh, in this context of network, there's also almost a similar meaning, okay? But to put it more specifically, a protocol consists of two components, service and a message. Service and a message. See, for example, you consider two layers, let's say lower layer and an upper layer, which, which is inside a system, let's say a host. Similarly, there's another host, let's say there are two layers. Just an example, we consider only two layers here. Okay. And each layer has its own protocol. For example, application layer has one protocol. Let's say you're doing web, brow web browsing. So there's a protocol, HTTP. HTTP is a protocol. So there's another HTTP running on the other host. HTTP is running on this host. So they need to talk to each other. Right? They need certain information, okay, which they can exchange. Okay? And so any message which are exchanged 
between the peers, peers which at the same level, okay? This layer on this device and same layer on another device, that's horizontal communication. So that is a piece of message which they transfer, which could be, which is mostly in the form of header. Let's say you take IP packet, there's an IP header, okay? Similarly, Ethernet means header, which includes uh, address and other things, okay? I'm not going into all different fields, right? At the same time, within the same host, vertically, it provides certain services to the upper layer. That's called service interface. That's called service interface. See, for example, we want to transfer a piece of data from one host to another host. Let's say that we want to transfer a message. This cannot directly transfer a message here. So this layer, it, it will ask the next layer. Next layer which is a set of program, okay? This layer will ask the next lower layer, hi, I want to send this message. Can you route this message? Can you do or can you perform routing function for this? Okay, that's all. Then the next layer, okay, so it has to do something, okay, to decide, okay, what is the address, how to get the address, destination address, and uh, let's say how to route it, where to route it, okay, what is the best way to route. So all these things are decided by the next layer. There could be other layers down. Routing means, let's say you decided, okay, you sent the piece of data to this, through this link to this switch, right? Then it will ask, the next lower layer. Let's say, okay, you send this message, this piece of data to this fellow and do error detection and other things. So error detection can be another layer, right? So what we say is that upper layer makes use of the services from the lower layer and the lower layer provides service to the upper layer. Right? That's a service interface. Service means it's a program, functions. Okay, at the same time, same layers on two different devices, they exchange certain information through header, header information. Any doubt, students, any doubt? So now we are going to look at two popular network architecture or protocol stack. The first one is seven layer ISO, OSI architecture which is defined by International Standard Organization, Open System Interconnection. It's a very clean design or clean architecture, but usually it's very clean architecture, okay? We don't adopt it practically as it is. We make, we want some flexibility here and there, right? Then, so next we look at internet architecture, okay, which, which, which is a popularly adopted architecture, which is also a subset of this architecture, which we can say. So this seven layer architecture, as the name says, this has seven layers, layer one, layer two, layer three. So layers are numbered from bottom. Layer seven. And the host runs are seven layers. Again, as I said, except layer one, which is the physical layer, which is responsible for transmission of the bits or signals, okay, which involves the transmission hardware, cables, etc. All others are usually software layers, set of functions. Okay. Similarly, this end host has layer seven to layer one. Other network elements, network systems, let's say we, have, let's say we have a router. Router has only three layers. Switch has only two layers. Of course, when you, uh, I will briefly explain the functions which are carried out at each layer, then you will understand why we don't need other layers in uh, the devices like routers or switches. But when the application is running, we need more layers. We need to do more. Similarly, at the end, at the destination also, we need all seven layers. Uh, I briefly, tell the key functions because in later lectures, subsequent lectures, we will be studying all these functionalities or protocols in more details. Okay? May, may not be possible to fully understand at this stage all these layer functions, but 
Uh, I try my best to explain what is done. At layer one, this is the bottommost layer. This is responsible for transmission of the bits or signals. Okay, though we say bits, actually it's uh, transmitted as a signal over the communication link. It could involve the bit duration, okay, signals, modulation, etc. Okay, it also um, uh, it involves electrical characteristics, as I said, like voltage level, duration, modulation, etc. Similarly, physical layer also defines the mechanical characteristics, like what type of connectors should be used, what type of cables can be used. So all are in the specification. Okay, is that okay? So that any vendor or anybody can, can follow these specifications, or physical layer specifications. And this is the hardware layer in the network course, in our course, we are not studying this layer in this course. There is a course on communications and all, maybe data communication or communications. So if you are interested, you can study those courses. So we mostly study from layer two. Layer two, which is called data link layer. As the name says, it's a link. That means there are links between host and the switch, switch to router, router to router, switch to switch, host to host. So there are links, right? Wire links or wireless link. So what type of functions are carried out at each link? That is layer two. Okay. It could be a point to point link, wire link or wireless link or broadcast link. Anything. Okay. So the first function is called framing, which is called aggregation of bits into frames. So meaning is this, because let's say A and B, A is sending all the bits, bits, one, two, three, four, five, etc. cetera, right? So actually it is sending a number of uh, packets, but what B receives is continuously bits, ones and zeros. So somehow the center should help the receiver to draw a boundary. Okay, these bits, okay, that forms packet one or let's say frame one. And these bits, starting from these bits to these bits, let's say this is frame number two or packet number two. Okay, so it should put a frame. Otherwise, receiver receives all ones and zeros. It has no clue what it is, correct? Okay? So the definition of boundaries, that is the framing. That is the function carried out at link level. At every link, it is done. It also does error control. When you say error control, first, minimally, it should detect the error. Okay, it's very interesting mechanisms are there to detect whether some bits are corrupted or not. Okay, and some link layer, what they do control in the sense that they also ask the center to retransmit. So, so that kind of mechanisms are carried out here. And flow control can also be carried out at link layer, which is usually optional. A similar flow control function is carried out at layer four, usually TCP does this. That is mandatory at level four, when TCP is used, okay? When, we, when UDP is used, the, the flow control is not done, yeah? Um, then comes, it also does medium access control. If it's a broadcast link, as we have seen before, when many hosts are connected to the same, or sharing the same link, broadcast link, so we need some MAC to control the access, okay? Who has to transmit when, okay? Whether uh, there can be collision, if there is a collision, how to handle it, so though they all come under MAC. Next, layer three. Layer three is a network layer. The main function of the network layer is routing. It can also do congestion control, okay, but the IP routers in TCP IP router, they don't do congestion control, but according to the design, they can also contribute to controlling the congestion. In the last class, we have seen when the congestion will occur, right? And layer four, we call it as transport layer. Okay, so that is the first end to end layer. First end-to-end -end layer, that means this is the layer which is running at the end host here, at the end host here. And the router and switches, they don't have TCP, they don't have UDP, okay? They are not end-to-end. So end-to-end -end communication, these are the people which talk to each other, 
that takes place only at layer 4. And we also call this TCP connection when they set up the communication channel, we call it as communication is process to process, okay, because there could be multiple processes or applications running, so each corresponds to one process. Uh, the, it, it takes care of reliable message delivery because when the packets are sent, may be congested, they may be dropped, there could be errors. So when the packets are received at the end host, first it has to guarantee that all packets are received. If some packet is missing, so there should be a mechanism to ask the sender to send it again. Similarly, packets may be received out of order. So it has to make sure that all packets are received, they are in order before they deliver it to the application. That's very important. It does the flow control. As I said before, flow control means if the sender is very fast compared to the receiver in processing, sender may jam the receiver, we don't want it. So how to cope up, how the receiver can tell or what kind of method can be used so that the sender is not jamming the receiver. Layer uh, five is called session layer. So session layer, okay, it provides a namespace collectively to a number of transport streams to form one session. So basic, so good example for session layer is video conferencing. There could be some audio stream, video stream, they are collectively called one session layer, session, okay. Next, layer six, presentation layer, it, it deals with the, the data representation. Though we may think this is very simple, but it has to be done how integers, strings are represented, how data is transmitted, MSB first, LSB first, then how that, whether there is any encryption of data, which usually happening now, encryption and compression, in the case of multimedia applications, uh, the data or message will be compressed. Okay? So this kind of uh, functions are carried out at presentation layer. Finally comes the application layer, which communicates with the user. We, for us, we just talk to the, we use the application layer app, right? So application layer protocol is different from application. For example, email is an application, SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol is the protocol for this application. Similarly, web browsing is an application, HTTP, hypertext transport protocol, HTTPS. So they are all the protocols for web browsing. Similarly, FTP, file transfer protocol, different protocols are there. The next type is five layer internet architecture, which is defined by IETF, Internet Task Engineering Task Force. This has only five layers, not seven layers. So the sense that these two layers will be missing, session layer and presentation layer. Okay. So if we need to perform any functions for the sessions or the presentation like encryption or compression or anything, the functions of these two layers will be fused into the application layer. Functionalities of session layer and presentation layer are to be combined or included in the application layer as required. If you don't need compression, no need. Okay, if you need compression, include it, all matched into the application layer. And um, in, in the internet architecture, these two layers are mandatory, are important, okay? So this is layer four, transport layer. You can say this is layer three. There's only one layer three protocol, IP, internet protocol. And layer four, you have transmission control protocol, TCP or UDP, okay? which you'll be studying in subsequent lectures. And layer five is the application layer protocol. So it just, it keeps it open, okay? TCP, IP, very difficult to change. But you can always change the applications, you can bring in new applications. So it's, it's very flexible, it's, it accommodates any kind of applications, okay? So these are some applications listed, file transfer protocol, HTTP, <coughs> web browsing, <laughs> network video, so video base, video tan this for video transfer. Usually network video, you can use UDP. Uh, of course, UDP is connectionless, TCP is connection oriented. TCP, 
okay, ensures that data is delivered reliably, but UDP is not, okay, because TCP is more complex. UDP doesn't take about, doesn't care about the reliability. Maybe some loss may be acceptable to us. For example, streaming, any video application. You want to pro keep the protocol simple, but here and there bits or some packets are lost, should be fine for our video-based application. Still, you can manage what is going on in the scene or movie or whatever it is. Okay, or very short uh, network protocol uh, tons of packets. So for that, we can just use UDP. Below, it simply says network. It says TCP IP supports any type of network. When you say network, it layer one, layer two, both are there. This network can be Ethernet. It could be uh, Sonet or it could be ATM. It could be Wi-Fi. So any type of network is supported. Okay, so it doesn't specify anything about this. So as long as IP can be run on this network, it should be fine. So this, we say, is follows hourglass design because the top is wide, bottom is also wide, so it supports many different types of networks, many different types of um, applications, but in between it's very narrow. That is, it supports TCP, UDP, and IP only. Any doubt? Uh, sorry, students, a few more minutes I'll take. So if you have other lectures, you may leave, you can watch the webcast. So let me quickly finish uh, two or three slides more. Yeah. Okay, now we are going, um, let's look at the naming convention of the messages. Okay. So many times you have used the term message, data, um, let's say packet, frame, okay, but there is a meaning of the piece of data at every layer. At the highest layer, when the data is produced, okay, whether it's a server or the client, we call it as application data. Let's say you're trying to download an image or let's say text, email text. So that piece of data, array of bytes or bits or whatever it is, that is the application data or application message. So this you can say layer five. At layer five application layer, we call it as data or message. At layer four, because it's a TCP next layer, let's, I mean, I'm showing TCP, or it could be UDP also, okay? TCP segments it, because the message is a very big message, it may not be sent as one packet, so it takes few bytes, okay, segments it, okay? So we call it as TCP segment. The few bytes, okay, are carried in a TCP segment, and the TCP adds its header. Just imagine it's an array of bytes, it's an array, okay, this is the data. So this data is here, payload, and this is the header. So TCP, when you transmit, let's say there's a TCP running here, so this wants to talk to this through a connection. So we, we have to give some identifier for the connection, right? So that is defined by the port numbers. So it adds some port numbers, let's say source port number, what is the destination port number, and some port numbers are fixed. For example, server port, it's 80. So these are all fixed, right? And I'm not giving the full header details. So this forms header. So when you add a header to some bytes of data, together we call it as TCP segment. Then the TCP layer asks the IP layer to perform routing. When it goes to IP layer, it adds its own header, like IP header. It says, Okay, it includes source address, IP address, what type of transport protocol type, TCP, IP, etc. cetera. Okay. So then we call, at that stage, we call it as IP packet or IP datagram. It has a different name. Then finally, we attach the header at layer two. Let's say it goes through Ethernet network, it adds Ethernet header. If it goes through Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi header will be added here. And this header information includes, among others, like source address, destination address. I think this example we have seen before. Source uh, uh, hardware address, destination hardware address. This information is added here. And also it attaches a few bits at the end, which we call it as 
error detection bits, CRC is the method, cyclic redundancy check, CRC bits are added here. Later we see why it's added at the end, not in the beginning, okay? So this we call it as Ethernet frame. If it's a Wi-Fi, we call it as Wi-Fi frame, right? So the naming is important. Message or data, application data, segment, then packet or datagram, then frame. The next layer, we call it as bits or signals, let's say bits. Is that okay? Now, we say that the piece of, okay, the generic term is PDU, protocol data units. At a layer, there's a protocol, the data which is used there is called PDU. So the lower layer, what it does is gets the upper layer PDU, this is the upper layer PDU, and it wraps it with its own header, meaning that it adds its own header, and this process of wrapping up with the header from the upper layer PDU to form the lower layer PDU is called encapsulation. Very simple, new PDU, that's at the lower layer, you get the payload, the upper layer PDU, that becomes the payload, you add your own header, it's called new PDU. That process is called encapsulation. So we say that, let's say, now look at this, TCP segment, this as a whole becomes the payload for IP packet. We say that TCP segment is encapsulated to form an IP packet. The IP packet is encapsulated into Ethernet frame or Wi-Fi frame. So that's the naming convention. This is something like, okay, you get uh, a box, you put it into another box, you add another label. Okay, then put in another box, you add a label, label over there, okay? So, and this is the last slide to illustrate how the data flows through various uh, uh, network elements. Let's say there's a host, so this is a host, and this is the destination host. Okay, so we use uh, TCP architecture, sorry, internet architecture for illustration. This also shows how the encapsulation is done. So at the higher layer at the source, we have a message M, message, or application data. It goes to the transport layer. Goes to transport layer means there's a function. It passes this piece of data to your program function, okay? It adds its own header, let's call HT. HT means header of the transport layer, HT. This together we call it as TCP segment or UDP segment. Then this as a whole is sent to the next lower layer, which adds network layer header, HN. We call it as datagram or packet. It's also called packet. Then it goes to link layer, where it adds its own layer, HL, link layer header. Then it will be transmitted, the physical layer. It goes to multiple uh, devices. So you can see that when from one host to the, let's say this is a switch, this is a switch. Switch has only two layers, layer one and layer two. So when it is received by the switch, the link layer header appears at the front, so it is sent through this link layer, which can carry out certain function. It may look into the destination address, okay, what has to be done, etc. cetera. Okay. Then it sends to the next link, this is the next link, and this next link has its own, uh, it's a, it could be the same link layer or a different link layer, so accordingly it adds HL. Though it says HL, this HL and this HL need not be the same. They can be different. For example, the MAC address, hardware address here, will be different from the destination hardware address here. Okay? So when it goes uh, to the router, router has three layers. So you can see that when it enters at the bottommost layer, link layer, a header appears at the front, and that will be processed and removed at layer two. Then it is passed to layer three, where network layer header appears. Network layer header means IP destination, etc. will be there. Some processing is done. Then it is passed to the next fellow, next system. Then you can see here at network layer, 
that's a header, and this HN, this HN, there may be small changes, need not be exactly same, but they correspond to network layer. Then it is sent to layer two, so it goes up, then comes down again. Layer two adds its own header. Note that this link layer header corresponds to this link. This link layer header corresponds to this link. They may be same link technology or link layer technology can be different. Okay, even if they are same, the addresses and other can be different, okay? So then it's finally, this frame is received here at the lowest level. Then once a frame is formed, the header, link layer header appears at the frame. Layer two process it, then layer three, layer four, layer five. At each layer, the, the header information is removed. Finally, the message is delivered to the application. So this is the end of the uh, lecture okay, for this week. And next week, we start with uh, uh, lecture notes three, okay, framing, uh, error detection, et cetera. And oh, next Monday is a holiday, okay? Then again, there will be another makeup lecture. Okay? So next Wednesday, we'll have tutorial. And uh, the makeup lecture, I will announce it. Okay, so makeup lecture, we will discuss the framing and other things, okay? Let me stop here. Sorry, I, I took a lot of time today. Please come. So if you have any doubts, I can spend time. Maybe we can meet outside.